A few years ago, we had the opportunity to visit Simpson Door Factory in McCleary, Washington. McCleary, Washington is about an hour and a half southwest of Seattle. And as you're driving out there, there are beautiful, tall hemlock, Douglas fir, and pine trees. We took a small video crew with us to capture the process of how a Nantucket door is made. The Simpson door factory was fascinating to see. There's so much going on, it's so busy, but I think the thing that surprised me the most is how organized and how clean it was for a door factory. While looking back at some of the door footage, we found some really interesting casual conversations between Brad Loveless from Simpson and Greg Hoyer. In this next clip that you're about to watch, they discuss how a Simpson door is specially engineered to be structurally sound and to withstand tough weather environments. Just a quick note, this video was taken in a loud door factory. We tried to do what we could to restore the sound, but it is loud. And so I suggest turning down your sound a little bit. Don't say you weren't warned. Hey Brad, this is an interesting door. These guys run out of style? <laughs> I don't see the style going all the way to the bottom. What's a little different than we're used to, that was, Yeah. Typical style and rail But I like it. Yep, yeah, it looks pretty real popular right now. This trend of contemporary, very clean. You know, the design professional gets involved in a project. They really like this look. It's a little bit different where the rail goes the full width of the door. Yeah. And so it's not just a look. We have to engineer that door a little bit different in order to get that done. Engineering for what purpose? Oh, a couple things. One is so the door is structurally sound. Okay. How do you join parts together? Right. But also how that door does uh, in a tough environment. All right. So one of the enemies of wood is end grain. So instead of having a uh, little bit of grain on this door, you actually look around the whole door. We make the parts and pieces in such a way so all you see is flat grain or edge grain. Right. Well, end grain is bad because that's yeah, like yeah. all those straws are going to draw water up in. That's right. And yeah. I know edge grain just won't take on water, so that's yeah. clever. Yeah. Now I also noticed that there's a funny street. Right. That can't be purposeful, or is it? Yeah, well, as you know right now, this door is in process. It's going right. to look much different when it's on the front of a home and it's finished. It's going to look beautiful. But yeah, we have these little tricks of the trade. Don't tell all our secrets. Okay, I but, won't. But some of the tricks are, um, as you machine a part or a piece, you know, it can tend to do different things. So as we run a machine to maybe double this edge of the door, Veneer, that has an opportunity to chip when we run into a machine. Right. So one of the tricks we're seeing here is glue. What it does is hold all that fiber together. So when we run it through a machine, it's not going to chip out. Well, that's very clever. Because yep. a, a style just runs through a molder it and it's yep. taken care of. But I never thought about that with this design. Yeah. You've got to deal with that edge. Yep. And you don't have a chance to remake that part. It's a door. Absolutely. Well, that's clever. Yeah. Now, I think you've got some doors that are are further along the process yeah. right here. This is one of our favorites. We love fur. We also love sapele. It's just a great look at wood. Yeah. And this doesn't have this band anymore. What happened to it? Oh, uh, we took it and ran it through the sander. Okay. And so, as you see, the door is a lot more presentable now than it was as we were working on it before. So it took it through the sander, and in that process, it took that glue off the surface. Now well, that, again, that looks great. Yeah, this door is still going to get finished. It's going to look even better a little bit further down the process as it gets put into that home. But right now, it looks beautiful. Great. I noticed too, Brad, like you said, we have edge grain here, here, and the performance block. Yep. So there's no water that's going to be able to get to those parts. Right, so this, the way the door is engineered, there's only one potential area for end grain where those straws are, like you mentioned. And what we've done is replace that edge grain, that end grain, with the composite block. So it's going to stop water infiltration right at the only spot that it can stop. That's, that's great. Yeah. We, we love durability. Yeah. And the other thing i got to ask you, 
you've got to have some big panels to go this whole way. How do you do that? Yeah, a lot of material in this door. You know, to the to uh, the homeowner, this looks like maybe a solid piece of ceramic right. mahogany. But really, if you're to pull this veneer back, you'll see it's made of lots of different pieces. Now, you wouldn't have one before it's got the veneer over it that we could look at, do you? Yep, we do. Oh, you where? Want to check it out. Yeah, I'd like it. So we're walking through live production here, makes it more exciting. Yeah. And what we've done on that same door is essentially peer, peel that beautiful veneer back. Right. And we're seeing what's going on underneath. So a flush door that we build like a tank. Yep. It's made finger jointed, Douglas fur. So we love our Douglas fur here. We do too. It has really tight vertical grain, performs very right. well in the exterior environment. So all these pieces, it almost looks like a butcher block table right now. Right. But these are all these joints as they come together are all finger jointed. You can't see the finger joint here. But these are all solid blocks of wood. Solid blocks of wood. Put together. Boy, this thing is massive. My gosh, that's heavy, Brad. And there's that finger joint you're talking about right there. there. Is. You get yep. tired of holding this. Now, yeah, real heavy. I noticed you have oak in between the fur. Yeah, it looks a little goofy right now, doesn't it? You know, I can almost tell just what this door is going to look like okay. when it goes into a hall. So what we've done, we've integrated an edge strip, if you will, right. with this beautiful white oak. So I can take a really educated guess that this door is going to get an oak veneer over the top, and we're going to groove into that door after that veneer is on. So the mahogany door, we looked down there that had the grooves, that would have been this block process Absolutely. with the mahogany strips in it, and then when your blades went through to put that groove in, we saw the mahogany veneer, but then we were into the solid mahogany edge grip. So that door over there looks very much like this, that these strips were supposed right. mahogany. Now, I think yesterday you talked about combined species. So if somebody wanted to do walnut on and then put a groove in to allow that white oak, you could do that too, correct? Absolutely. No, now, no restrictions on wood species or how you can that. Now, do you actually do that? We do do that. Yeah, yeah. we'll mix a variety of species. Um, what you're talking about is really specialized. Here is one species and what's revealed beneath it is something different. Absolutely different. That's crazy. Well, thanks for showing me that. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for being here. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip as much as we did. It's so interesting to see how these beautiful doors are made and the techniques that go into preventing water infiltration and building a door that you can trust and that's going to last for a really long time. Thank you all for watching. We really appreciate you. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel down below, like this video, and we'll see you all again next week.